my little snookums. <laughs> oh, my hero has returned. <laughs> ah, yeah, voila. And did you procure the item that I asked for? Yeah, well, I went to that, that cave of uh, blunders, whatever it's called, and uh, yeah, I found it. Here you go. <laughs> you will be greatly rewarded. <laughs> well, that's a funny thing you should say, though. Well, there's all this gold just like lying around, so I find a way. Help myself. <laughs> <gasps> Behold! Ah. Ooh, so what's that then? Is that some kind of like magic lamp that you're rubbing? A genie comes out and gives you free wishes. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. It's for tea. It's a teapot. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Do you mind pouring us one, please, love? Yeah. Cheers. Hello, chapits, and welcome to my cave of wonders. <laughs> this is board games, everybody. Should dot dot dot. Uh, and in these videos, I go through a game and I kind of point out all the strengths and weaknesses of the game, and then I leave it to you to decide whether it's a game for your collection in your cave of wonders or not. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up and play Aladdin and the Magic Lamp from Purple Brain Games or Purple Brain Creations. And I will then give you my review, tell you if it's my cup of tea. Where is my cup of tea? And then I will uh, leave it up to you to decide whether you should walk home with this today, tomorrow, Christmas, or uh, some other time. The object of the game is players are little street rats, little thieves going into the Cave of Wonders and hopefully being the sneakiest thief with their dice and stealing treasures, which will account as points at the end of the game. Some of these treasures are, are trapped, so players have to be careful, and some treasures other players might be going after at the same time. So you have to be very careful and very sneaky Although being sneaky means that you can be very, very slow at winning. So the first thing you're going to need to do is place the deck of Aladdin's lamp cards in the middle of the table. Or maybe I should just call him Dim. Yeah, I'll call him Dim. Um, and then afterwards, you're going to need to place the three decks of treasure cards. These come in gold, silver and bronze. And each of these decks has a wizard returns, which will signal the end of the game. These cards will go from the fifth card on the bottom. So once you've shuffled these decks, you place five cards down, then you place the wizard card, and then you place the rest of the cards on top. In these treasure chests, there are gems of four colors. You're gonna to need to collect as many of these as possible. There are also these talismans, which are like jokers, and you attach them to a gem to augment the, the level, the number of gems that you have. So now I have three green gems. Now I have four green gems. There is also jewelry, which comes in three different types. If you collect a set of three, which includes a bracelet, a necklace, and a ring, you will also get mega points at the end of the game. Each player will also receive one of these treasures at random from a starting deck. Unless you're playing with two players, then two players, you take two treasures at random each. Each player will also get one shiny purple dice. Again, if you're playing two players, each player will receive two dice. And then you'll get a treasure board each, which is where the dice goes. So with your dice, your treasure board and your starting treasure, you're ready to play. With your dice, your dice is going to do three jobs over the course of the game. 
Number one, it's going to show you how stealthy you're going to be, whether you're going to be a six, which is like a bull in a china shop, or a one, which is as stealthy as Sir Charles Lytton. Then later on, it would determine how much treasure you're going to take from one of the three chests. So if you are a bull, you get to take six treasure, whereas if you're Sir Charles Lytton, you get to take one, and hopefully it's the Pink Panther. And then finally, it will determine your health. So at six, again, means that you have six hit points, whereas a measly one is a, a one hit point. So Sir Charles will have to drop his tough cup of tea if he gets involved in a trap. The game will play over several rounds, and each round is broken into three phases. The first phase is choose a chest. So as I said, you need to decide your stealth value. So you're going to be a level one, a level two, level three, four, five, or six. And then you want to place that level in one of the spaces which correspond with the treasure so bronze silver and gold so let's say for instance i'm going to choose a level four for the bronze chest now this will be done in secret like this you'll be covering over this treasure board with your hand so no one else can see but for the purposes of the video it's a lot easier like this so my stealth value is four so that's how sneaky i am and the Obviously, it depends on the chest that I want to break into. So I want to break into this bronze chest. The next phase is to summon a genie. Now, as I said, everyone is covering over their treasure chest boards. You're going to have to imagine I've got four hands here. And when everybody has placed their dice and they're all ready, they count three, two, one, and everyone reveals at the same time. Players that have the same number on their display, on their dice, will have to race for the lamp. It's a case of simply the first player to put their hand on the lamp will get to take one of three wishes. If by mistake you put your hand in to grab the lamp and your number doesn't actually match any of the other players, you will have to face a forfeit. You'll have to designate another player to steal one of your treasures. And the only thing they can steal from you is a gem or a piece of jewelry which doesn't belong to a completed set. So the player who is first to touch the lamp, if there are any numbers the same, will get to make one of three wishes. They take the first card and they read it out aloud. Now some of these cards will say, oh, that the genie's in another room, but you can make another wish. So you can make another wish. You can, you can take three of these cards, but you will have to at one point say, yeah, that's the wish I wish to make. Okay, this one says steal one card from another player. It cannot be a talisman uh, or a card from a completed set of jewelry. So this could be a good wish to take and use on another player and steal one of their cards. If you get to the third wish, because you've passed on the first two wish, you have to do whatever it says on the third card. It may be good for you, it may be bad for you, and it may be for someone else. Or there might be nothing at all. So with the genie phase complete, you move on to the searching the treasure chest section. What you do is you go through the three treasure chests in order from bronze, silver to gold, and you'll see who is the stealthiest to steal from them. So starting with the bronze, we can see that two thieves have tried to break into the bronze chest, but only the stealthiest one, which is this player here with the three, can actually steal from this treasure chest. Now. This three indicates how many cards you can take from this treasure chest. So starting, pull the first card. Ooh, look at this, it's a blue gem. And it has two scorpions on it. Now these scorpions are traps and they take away from your life points, which at this point in time is three. So after taking this card, I need to decide whether I'm gonna to continue to search and take the other two cards, or if I'm gonna stop and just keep this treasure as it is. So if I continue, for example, I've oh look, I've pulled three more scorpions, which equals a total of five, which goes way past my hit points, which means that I lose all of this treasure, and all this treasure goes into a discard pile. Once that's done, you move on to the silver chest, and as you can see, this player would be able to pick three cards from the treasure chest here. And then after the silver one's done, it's the gold, and as you can see, this player gets to take one gold card from here. Now let's say that this player here had their three in the bronze treasure chest, like so. So these two are joint for stealing from this, this treasure chest, because this is a four which is higher than the threes. What had happened is these guys get nothing and it actually moves to this player, who can take four cards. So we take one, oh, there's two scorpions, uh, continue. Oh, there's some jewelry, um, continue. 
Ooh, there's some more jewelry and continue fourth card oh yeah that's not too bad that's not bad i've collected four treasure and i get to keep those and place them in front of me if at some point in the game someone draws a treasure chest and it happens to be the wizard returning that signifies the end of the game so that player would continue taking treasure until they've collected the number that they have to collect and then you count up your scores so scoring end of game scoring works like this First, you'll get a point for every card that you have in front of you, apart from if you have a wizard card that does not count. So in this case, this player has 13 points. If you have a set of jewelry like this player has here, they have the ring, the necklace and the bracelet, they will get additional points. Now the purple ones are worth an additional six points. The blue jewelry is worth an additional eight points. And then the gold jewelry is worth an additional 10 points. This ring on its own doesn't count as anything. And then finally, the player with the most of each of the colored gems will get an additional five points. So let's say that this player had the most white gems, all the other players had three or less. This player would get an additional five points for the white. And if they had more blue gems than any other player, they'd also get another additional five points for that. If there are any ties, nobody gets any extra points. So to sum up for Aladdin and the Magic Lamp, it is a board game that every little street rat is gonna want to steal. This is a fun family game. Kids will love this game. Kids have great fun playing this game. It has three contributing elements. Number one, there's the what the first phase, which is the, the bluffing and you know the, the, the controlling of your dice. This is fun. The more you the longer the game goes on, the more you can bluff other players and go, all right, I'm gonna get you this time. And it brings up that fighting talk in you, you know, I, you keep stealing the treasure from underneath me. I'm, you know what, I'm gonna steal it from underneath your nose this time. And it's that that light kind of deduction of what treasure chest the players are gonna go for and what number they're gonna place is enjoyable and then you have an aspect of the game which the kids love the second phase which is the reveal and then look around the table is my number matching anyone else's bang slap on the lamp kids love doing that in fact that's probably the favorite part of a lot of kids when they play this game it is just a simple race to slap in the middle of the table which you've done millions and millions of times but hey ho, it's it's just a, a little part which comes around. And again, it doesn't always come around because sometimes, you know, five players, you've got six numbers to choose from. There is a possibility that, you know, not the same number is going to come up. And so people, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's that fun element and that you accidentally slapped the lamp thinking that you had the same number as another player and you didn't. And it's like, Aah. So, yeah, <laughs> fun, fun. And then the third phase is the push your luck where you're like, okay, yeah, I, I, I was very cautious and I didn't think I was going to get into that treasure chest and so I've only got two hit points and it's like you draw the first card and there's three scorpions on it, that's it. You won but you lost and it's, it, it's fun at the same time, you know, especially if you've got a big number and you're drawing lots of cards and there's no scorpions on them. Push your luck is, is push your luck and this game is pretty quick and that's what I like about it is that it's a quick playing you know if you're playing two players you're looking around 10 minutes if you're playing five players you're looking a bit longer say 20 minutes and but it doesn't outstay its welcome as a basically push your luck game because you're pushing your luck against the other players you're pushing your luck against your speed and then you're pushing your luck about the card draws that you're getting so um it, <laughs> It leaves you wanting more when you're playing with kids, but when you're playing with adults, you'll probably play it and then go, yeah, let's move on to something a bit more serious. There is none. None that I can figure out and fathom. This game is just pure luck. Um, any kid can win at the table and any parent can win at the table. Uh, but that's what makes it fun and family style because anybody can win quite easily with just you know the right wind and i've seen kids run away with bucket loads of cards and then when you try to be stealth stealthy and sneak underneath them with a lower number that's when you get stung by a scorpion and <laughs> but it is just a fun 
laugh out loud moment. Um, to make the game a bit more stealthy and a bit more strategical, there is this variant which is called My Pressure. Yeah, yeah, it comes with a ring. Yeah, and what will happen is if a player places a six and they actually get to take six cards, they actually get to take this ring as well. At the end of the game, it is worth five points on top. One million dollars. No, it's not one million dollars, but five points on top. Bonus. And if someone else gets to steal it from them, they get to steal it as well. And oh, a fun variant. Now let's talk about the components. You're getting some pretty good quality components here. They have the rule book, which explains everything nicely and interjects a bit of humor as well in the way that it's written. There is also the storybook of Aladdin and the Magic Lamp, which is a nice, very short four page version of Aladdin and it does its job. You know, it won't like reimagine the Disney world for you, but hey ho. You have the cards. The cards are good. They're simple to sort out. Uh, there's not too many of them. They're nice quality. The, the art is simple, but it does its job. You have the ring. Huh? Very nice. You have the dice, which are nice. And you also have these lovely treasure things. I've, uh, I think they could have been bigger. Um, I think one of the problems that I have is we've been playing at a big table. It's very hard to see when everyone reveals what number everybody's got. You have to really go like, Rich, what you got there? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, but that's, that's the only drawback. And the box holds everything with its wonderful insert unless you're transporting it around and then sometimes they fall out. Yeah. Yeah, I had to force that one there. I'm sorry, I had to force it, but sometimes it does just, they just fall out without even forcing. Talking about these lamp cards very quickly, they are very, very kind of take that. You know, you can play them on other people and be nasty to them. People can play them on you, and sometimes they can be nasty to yourself if it's your third wish and you have to take it. Yeah! So if you're not into take that, push your luck bluffing or too much luck in games, then this game is probably not going to be for you. But it is quick played and it, it, it's, it's laughable fun stupidity for your family. Mayday! 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 Go down! Ah! But as I said, the box inside is nice. It has a plan of how to lay up the table. It's another wonderful uh, Tales and Games series book. No number, so you don't have to collect them all. You don't have to own them all, just own the good ones. Um, how do I feel about this? Is this my cup of tea? Where's my cup of tea? One sec. Is this game my cup of tea? It's empty, yeah. This game is my cup of tea. This is not my preferred game from Tales and Games. This is actually probably pretty close to the second favorite. My favorite is Pied Piper because there's a there's a bit more strategy and the game feels a bit more kind of, you know, you can win this game. And again, there's more bluffing and trying to converse people to do what you don't want them to do, what they don't want to do. Yeah, so uh, this is a pretty good, pretty good pretty good game but it, as i said it's a light game it's a familiar game it's probably a nice one to warm up with and have a laugh with there's no overall strategy you're not going to win this game every time you play it um but it is a great one for kids younger kids may may bring some tears but the older kids will have a great time slapping the lamp outbidding you you know because they they love getting one over on their parents and they just love to have a good time. This has gone down really, really well. Um, and there's not much more I can say about it, apart from Aladdin. Prince Ali, 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 Ali. So there you go, another board games everybody should dot, dot, dot. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether this is one for your, your shelves, because I don't know how much money you got for Ikea. But um, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that you found it as a useful resource in deciding whether this is something that should be sat on a bookshelf near you. Um, give this thumb, uh, give this thumb, give this video a thumb, a like, share it with your friends. Love it, give it a cuddle if you can. 
<laughs> subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me out uh, in creating more videos and getting better quality videos, and maybe, uh, no, but getting better quality, I have a Patreon that you can go to and you can throw a few pennies my way. I have a few promos around as well that um, I can send you if you give me lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, check that out at patreon.com and don't forget to visit me on uh, Facebook, Board Games Everybody Should, and my website, boardgameseverybodyshould.com. Thank you! And I'll finish by saying play nice with each other. Yes. And remember that you don't need to own every single board game that's out there. You just need to own a few good ones. And hopefully I've pointed you in the right direction of where the Pink Panther is. Oh, oh wow. wow. I rolled a one. <laughs> I, believe I, I believe I've earned a critical failure song, gentlemen. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia with me. Now with the genie phase complete, you'll move on to the searching the chests phase. In this phase, you'll go through these chests in order, bronze, silver, and gold. God, bronze and gold. <laughs> you will be greatly rewarded. <laughs> if I could open this bag. <laughs>